Hello, I'm Life Support's Modern Woman Sigourney and welcome tonight to this a very special moment in the history of Life Support. Over the years, not a lot has changed here at Life Support. Every Monday night for 10 weeks a year, Australia relies on seeing the same friendly familiar faces delivering equally friendly advice. But tonight, one of those faces will have changed forever. You see, in an effort to deter unwanted adulation that comes with being a gay icon, our very own Dr Rudy has undergone corrective surgery to give his facial features a more heterosexual look. Here we go. I must say, I, or we, feel very privileged to be here live in this very special place at this very special time for the unveiling of Dr Rudy's new face. Dr. Rudy, so much hinges on this new face. Will it be photogenic? Will it generate the right sort of fan mail? And will it still be recognised at the flower drum? <gasps> this is the final bandage now. Mira, Mira. Oh my God. <sighs> yeah, right. Yeah, I'll get used to it. But will they? How's it? And welcome to this very special episode of Life Support. That's right, it's special at. Yes it is, and it's wonderful to be in your company tonight. How's it? I'm Dr Rudy, and as you can probably tell just by looking at me, I like women. I'm Penny, and as you can probably tell just by looking at me, I've got all the info you want to know. I'm Todd, and I don't know what you can tell just by looking at me, but I'll give you a clue. I'm the man that's handy here on Life Support. And tonight, I'll teach you a surefire way to eliminate car thieves. In my popular More Money segment, I'll be advising you on all the best ways to invest in art. I'll be showing young mums how to get back to work without dumping the kids in daycare. And I'll be instructing all you modern women on how to achieve the right phonetics to fake an orgasm. Oh, you're kidding, aren't you, Sigourney? Oh, Todd, would I lie to you? Well, I don't know now. Well, we've got stacks to get through tonight, so let's get stuck in. There's nothing worse for a woman in today's do-everything-have-everything-be-everything culture than being a young mum who wants to get back into the workforce without the stigma of leaving your new baby in a daycare centre. So, if you want to get back to work and keep caring for your kid, why don't you think about a career in advertising? These days, we're bombarded by advertising on every possible thing, in every conceivable place. So it's becoming increasingly difficult to catch a potential customer's eye. All you have to do is sell advertising space on your breast and then feed your baby in public. A lot. I can guarantee you, people will take a sneak peek at your publicity. And because most consumers will only risk a quick glance, your message will continue to sell subliminally long after the effects of a billboard have worn off. See what I mean? So, be 
a woman who has it all and be a real working mum, full-time employed and full-time nurturing. Because in advertising, as in child rearing, breast is best. See ya. Oh, g'day. I love taking my main lady friend out to a top tier restaurant. The atmosphere, the service, good food. Yeah, good food, but not always a lot of it. Why do these really expensive restaurants give you such enormous plates with such little food on it? Check out this main. Any bloke with half an appetite would polish that off in two seconds. Everything all right, little lady? You don't think they've been a bit stingy with the servings? Oh, no, everything's great. I mean, look at the size of these plates. The food must be really special. It seems for the ladies that the size of the meal doesn't matter. It's the size of the plate that makes all the difference. In fact, just because a plate's big means that a meal must be special. Well, if the size of the plate's all that counts, there's something else we can use this for. That's right, fellas. If you're a little bit lacking in the old love-making apparatus department, next time you show it to her, why not display it on a really big plate? Let's see how it works. Hey, little lady. Wow, look at the size of that plate. You must be really special. Come here. See, guys, size really does matter, but it's the size of the plate that makes all the difference. And every guy can buy one of these. I think the quality, yeah, the presentation, you know, how you wrap it. Yes, I think men probably could work a bit more on the presentation of their package. I, I think it'll avoid the smell. Smells all good. Looks is all right, maybe hair is all right, but smell. Oh man, I clip. What are you talking about? But I have to clip. If I don't clip, it's not clean. You know, the grease and the grime, you don't want all that. You know. How's it? Dr. Rudy here with more monetary management mantras for all you average Australians. And tonight I want to talk to you about investments. Now there are many things for you to invest your mega earnings in, but at the moment I recommend you consider investing in Australian art. You see, at a recent auction at Sotheby's, a predictably primitive painting sold for over half a million dollars. Now the artwork is untitled. But more importantly, the artist is now deceased. And as we know, an artwork dramatically increases in value after the death of the artist. And that's why I recommend you consider investing in Aboriginal art. You see, Aboriginal mortality rates are almost four times as high as any other Australians. And that's great news for the investor who is keen to get a quick and healthy return on their investment. And that's what art is all about. Now, when choosing an artwork to purchase, it's important to do your research. You need to know who painted it and where it came from. Now, I don't know much about art, but I do know about health statistics. And that's why I always try to find a male artist from the Northern Territory, preferably Arnhem Land. You see, a male artist only has a 45% chance of reaching the age of 65. And Arnhem Land has the highest mortality rate in the country. So with this information, I know if I've made a long or short-term commitment. This piece, it was short-term. So I'm off to auction. And that's all there is to it. All you need to know to make more money. So don't wait. Buy now. Buy now. Some very sound advice there, Penny. You see, careful investing means you can keep your assets healthily in the black. Yeah, new face, but the song remains the same. Speaking of which, considering it's just us girls here, what do you think of Dr. Rudy's new face? Doesn't look that different to me. Oh, please. You don't think he looks more rugged, less boyish? Look, to be honest, I can't even remember what he used to look like. Really? Yeah, well, if I said I noticed any difference, I'd be faking it. Ah, but would I have believed you? Because faking it is an art form and every woman should have the patience to perfect her performance. And right now, I'm gonna show you how. Really? That's right, Penny. And you thought you were the only one who knew how to, how do you say it? Scam the man. So, 
you've finally found your Mr. Right. His looks are sublime, his family's pure pedigree, he's got a magnificent house in a marvellous suburb, and he's a master in the boardroom. Unfortunately, there's one room in the house where he's not the master. But if you want to keep him and his quality real estate portfolio, then perhaps it's time to start faking it. Once you've decided to simulate an orgasm, the first step is deciding how. You want your faking to sound as real as possible, because if perchance he manages to improve his technique, you don't want to have to explain the difference between the counterfeit and the genuine article. So, I recommend getting in someone who's accomplished the task before and taping yourself in the throes of ecstasy. This is Gregor, not usually my type, but one night after too much mowing, <laughs> I found he really is quite a capable young man. Tradesmen are so good with the hands. Job, Gregor. Don't be a stranger. Now, like learning any foreign language, all you have to do is listen to the tape and then read along with it. Oh, Gregor! Oh! Oh! Now, just practice this multiple times and you'll achieve the right fulfilling fornication phonetics. Once you're completely satisfied with your rehearsals, you're ready for an opening night performance that will turn Mr. Right into Mr. Right Away without bruising his fragile ego. Oh yeah. I'd rather just keep trying until it happened and if it wasn't gonna happen, I'd rather say it's not gonna happen. I don't think she's ever faked it. I think it's always been real. I think all my girlfriends have faked an orgasm. I did, and it involved a very long session and spitting on somebody's back. <laughs> I just couldn't be bothered anymore, you know? <laughs> what do you do? You know, it was just too long. It was not going anywhere, so it's just a matter of flipping over and making the noise and spitting on her back. What can I say? <laughs> to mix business with pleasure and any punched in party person knows how to turn a soiree like this into a real money spinner. Rule number one, wait till after midnight. Everyone here has had plenty to drink and smoke. The party food ran out hours ago so there's about to be a serious case of the munchies. Hey guys, how about I order some pizzas? Yeah. All right, top. When guys are pissed at a party, they'll hand over money like nobody's business. It makes them feel like big men and they think it'll impress you. Stoners can be a little more stingy, so it may take some coaxing. Come on, man, you said you were hungry. Ta. Make sure you go from room to room, asking each and every guy at the party for money. At a decent sized do, you should end up with at least 500 bucks. Now for the food. The weekend is peak hour for our takeaway culture, so it shouldn't take you long. Ah, here we go. Too late, man, they ate them all. You ate all these, remember? Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> there you go. Sometimes when it's getting late, an empty pizza box can mean a full money box. Anyway, I'm off to get something expensive to eat. See ya. Yeah, good eh? These days thieves are getting smarter and smarter. Even with all the security devices available on the market, you still can't be sure your car is safe because every time a new device comes out, the crooks find a new way to get around it. The bastards! If this has happened to you before, you'll know how angry and knotted up you feel inside. 
You just want to get them back and make them suffer like you've suffered. Well today, I'm going to show you a nifty little trick you can use to make sure the next joyrider who takes your car will feel no joy ever again. Imagine a built-in revenge device that immediately punishes the crook who tries to get away with your car. What I've got here is some one inch flexible hosing. Now I've attached one end of this to the exhaust pipe and the other end I've stuck up in a small hole I've cut underneath the spare wheel carriage leading into the car. What will happen next is the next crook to start her up will automatically gas himself. Now it's as easy as that to install and it looks inconspicuous. No thief will ever suspect. It's a great trick for two reasons. You immediately and effectively deal out a dose of revenge on your thief and you know that your car will be found within a short distance. How about that? What a totally top tip. He's a goner in 60 seconds and the car's not travelled more than 10 metres. My word, Benny, that seems like the final solution for when it comes to stalling car thieves. Yeah, looks fairly effective. I thought realised he just killed that young man. Yeah, well, car theft's a risk. I guess Todd figures if that kid hadn't tried to knock off his wheels, he wouldn't have been knocked off. I see, an eye for an eye equals a life for a Subaru. Well, that's our old testament, Todd, for you. Anyway, Benny, let's move on to happier things. What do you think of my new look? You haven't told me. Not an oversight, Dr Rudy. Personally, I'm happy to hide from all the hyperbole. Yes, well, more importantly, I'm very interested to know what you at home think. So why not write and let me know. That's right, send your letters to Dr Rudy's face. Locked bag 028. Rose nest. 1585. OK, look at this. This is my mate Maddie. She's 16 years old and she's just found out she's pregnant. The dude responsible's already backpacked off and she knows that when her folks find out, her life won't be worth living. Now don't you worry, Maddie, because there is a way to let your parents know you're knocked up that's guaranteed to leave them supportive and compassionate. All you have to do is spike your own drink with a date rape truck, like GHB or a Hypnol. Something that shows up easily in the bloodstream. Then you just tell your parents you've been the victim of a drink spiking at a party. You don't know what happened. You blacked out. All you do know is you've got a bun in the oven. So, whether you decide on a delivery or a debun, you know your parents are going to be there. With lots of love, loyalty and loot. Just make sure you down the drink in the safety of your own bedroom. Preferably at night you'll pretty much just have a good night's sleep. And in the morning, a simple blood test will prove that someone has tampered with your non-alcoholic drink. Normally you wouldn't have to go to this much trouble, but people these days, they're so untrusting. They want proof. And let's face it, if a girl goes to a GP, it's easier to get Rohypnol than the morning after pill. So there you have it. If you get knocked up, just knock yourself out and avoid being punted by parental pregnancy panic. See ya! Well, Dr Rudy, as a traditional television tradesman, that's a nice job, I've got to say. You've got yourself a real gold licence number there. Well, thank you, Todd. Yeah, smooth edges, complementary modern surfaces and finishes, but with a classic tone. Nicely incorporating the old and the new. Yes, well, Saskia is the leader in her field. Yeah, right. Although I would have probably used a Barsky double skin hook and a number three suture, especially around your eyes. I'll be sure to pass that on to her. And, you know, I do think it makes you look more manly. You know, less boyish. Thank you, Todd. Yeah, more brooding all over. What with that slightly chiselled chin and those bedroom eyes. All right, Todd, don't go on. Unrestrained male worship is the very reason for the surgery in the first place. You're right. I think, Babs, now we should move on. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, g'day. It's a known fact of life that women like to acquire shoes. 
It baffles me how a woman needs to have so many pairs of shoes when she's only got two feet. Exactly the same as us guys. Yeah, they're nice too. Well, what happens when her appetite for shoes exceeds your ability to purchase them? What happens when she wants a million shoes? Well, today, I'm gonna show you a top tip that'll solve all your shoe budget problems. Now, it seems to me that just the visual pleasure of many shoes to choose from is the number one factor. Now, look what happens when I strategically place this mirror here. The magic of mirrors is that one mirror will double your image, but two mirrors creates the effect of infinity. And there you have it. Shoes as far as the eye can see for the price of two mirrors. And now with all that money you've saved, you can spend it on tools for the shed. Because let's face it, a man can never have too many tools. Ladies, for the modern woman, one of the only good things about getting a little bit older is that buying gifts gets much simpler as long as you know a few of the basic principles. Everyone knows it's a thought that counts, which is a polite way of saying the person that receives the gift has to be gracious about accepting it, even if they don't really want it. Now, one of the best gifts to give is a book, but good books can be so expensive, unless you know where to shop. As you can see, libraries have stacks of books. Go to the literature section. Most of these are in mint condition because well, nobody really wants to read them. And that makes them the ideal gift. And the best thing is, they're free. <gasps> the new John Irving. 750 pages and turgid. Ideal. Don't be silly, it's not stealing, it's borrowing. And that's what libraries are there for. Don't forget to keep the library barcode that you peeled off in a safe place. You'll need it again. And here's a little something for your birthday. Ooh, it doesn't feel little. <laughs> oh, it sounds so great to see Irving's back, isn't it? A lot of people felt that he never recovered his form after Garb, but I heard this one is nearly as good as a widow for one year. <sighs> I wanted to buy it for myself, but I just couldn't justify the cost. You know how ridiculous hardback prices are these days. <laughs> but maybe I could borrow yours when you're finished with it. Oh, look, I'm still finishing my Jilly Cooper, so why don't you read it first and I'll get it back from you? Oh, if you're sure. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the beautiful present. You shouldn't have gone to so much expense. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> OK, it's safe to say she won't be asking for this again. So, it's back to the library for Mr Irving. That's one expensive birthday gift for the price of the wrapping paper. And I can look forward to a reciprocal gift. Very expensive. After all, it's the thought that counts. Chances are you're not going to believe this, but here we are at the end of another show. As good a reason as any to make a fondue. Way retro. Yes, it's a classic Swiss fondue made with white wine and melted cheese. My words are gone here. That's quite an artery hardening treat. Yep, and it looks all right. Yeah, and cheese is choice. Now make sure you join us next week for a very special episode of Life Support when we face our greatest challenge. That's right, it's an emotional roller coaster that you wouldn't want to miss. So tune in to see if we achieve our greatest feat. That's next Monday night at the very special time of 9 o'clock. And in the meantime, all you Aussie battlers, try and have a little more faith in yourself. And continue to keep on scamming the man. Good, Good night, night, Australia. Australia. So who wants to go first? Mm.